beetle because they reflect visible radiation. Okay. And then there are all sorts of indirect and complicated uh, feedbacks. I mean, one of them that people are interested in now had, had to do with what are called the indirect effects of aerosols. The aerosols, things soup that's lofted into the air, uh, they not only do does, does that nucleate cloud uh, water droplets, which can become ice, so that makes more cloud, uh, but they also have a direct effect on blocking incoming sunlight. And and how do they get, uh, fall, fall into the mix of creating clouds? Yeah, this is a, this is an enormously complicated problem and an important one. Um, but I'm so I would say. Uh, uh, that one, if you were to uh, ex explain that, then you would go a long way toward understanding planetary albedo. Um, but I'll just maybe carry it. <laughs> 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 if, I know it, if I know it, I'm not saying. Okay. <laughs> um, we'll take uh, two more questions. Um, I see a lot of, um, I think, students in the audience. We've heard from a few already, but if there are students who'd like to ask questions, we certainly encourage you. Yes. Hello. Um, yeah, I was just wondering if you're like talking, you know, to someone you met on the street, say, how do you explain to them why what you're doing is important? Did everybody hear that? Yeah. <laughs> um, when you meet somebody in the street, you ask uh, John, uh, how do you explain why what you're doing is important? I got that right. <laughs> Now, wait, do they ask me or do I ask? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll answer by way of an example. Uh, I, I was at a meeting of a group of material scientists. Now, that's a sort of area between engineering and physics where people try to understand materials. And I gave a talk about what are called lower dimensional phase transitions. You know, what happens in two dimensions or one dimension? Okay, right, imagine a one dimensional solid or two-dimensional solid. So I gave this talk, and a, and a, a distinguished experimentalist said to me, uh, well, what that was, uh, that was no better than poetry. And I said, well, thank you very much. <laughs> um, if I could contribute to poetry, which I can't, um, then, then I think that's the benefit. Um, I think uh, the principal Luxury I have is the potential to add to the, the edifice of the way we think about the world. Um, and I think that's important and it has value in the same way that um, if you, even if you hate Jackson Pollock, uh, his art has value um, in that way. And do I say it's important because I make widgets or because I have something important I can say about the climate? No. I think it's interesting in its own right. Okay. Yes, last question. <clears throat> so I found it interesting your description of low resolution and high resolution data, or low resolution over a long period of time and high resolution. Um, and it seems like the things that you're interested in develop theories to, to draw them together. Um, I'm not sure what to take away from this presentation, but can you say uh, that we're making good progress in drawing those together? I think a lot of what people would be interested in is a coherent theory, even if it's about based on chaos or something, that, uh, that, that shows the relationship between long-term data, <clears throat> however coarse, and sort of local high-resolution uh, data that is that is over shorter periods of time and and develops a rational trajectory for that. I think that's very valuable and, and interesting at the same time. Uh, can you say something about that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the question is, um, you have, uh, of course, long-term data and you have some short-term data and how do you make any use of the combination of these, of these things? Um, that's a rough paraphrasing of what you're commenting on. Um, so I did, I showed just one figure of what uh, is sort of a geochemical data set. Uh, I, 
Um, so I worked on, on this problem in two ways. Um, there is an interesting, so the mathematical approach that, that we use uh, is a particular type of differential equation which is called a non-autonomous differential equation is the word, but it's got a bunch of interesting characteristics. And you, you can model uh, things with multiple time scales. And so you saw this picture of the, of the well. Right? Uh, you can have a ball sitting in one part of the well and sombrero being shaken at very, very high frequency. Okay? But then it matters how high the ball has jumped when a particular change in the frequency occurs. Then it, then, it, then it gets over to the other side. And, and so one can use realistic uh, models to study the general properties of what can happen when you have what are called multiple time scales uh, interacting. Like you see the metronomes, right? And, uh, there are very complicated things happening in simple systems. On the other side, to feed into these models, what we do is look at the time series. So we have 30 years of time of data, uh, 34 years now of data. And uh, we're asking questions if can you say anything given that it's this short window about a time scale that's longer than the window? So that's a question you, you can ask. Okay. Um, and you do that by treating the system in a particular mathematical framework that you can then connect to the longer term data. And you can say, are there time scales that appear here that appear in this data? Um, and or what sort of data would you need to see whether there's a commensurability? And this is just, I'm using one, one approach. And there are a lot of people who are very interested in this. Um, I, I just talked to Carl Wunsch earlier, who said he was in a meeting with a bunch of statisticians who are now interested in, in trying to understand uh, the, these kinds of issues. So I think it's a really uh, an important question because you know, the data stops here. And so the question is, when I'm looking at a little window, is, is this really just uh, what's happening in the last 30 years? Is it a part of a longer term uh, process? And you know, it's, it, what's dangerous is to extrapolate. Right? Right. <laughs> quick follow-up. Uh, that's, that's a good answer. Uh, quick follow-up is, so is the current state of the work that you're doing in that area substantiate, is it is it unknown at the moment, the result, or do you feel like it, you believe it substantiates a net uh, increase in temperature, let's say, of, of the planet? Is it substantiating the general concern uh, that people have on the the, uh, the results of this, of this work? Or would you say it's unknown? I can tell you one thing uh, certain, for certain. If I look at the 30, now 32 years of satellite data on daily time scales, um, I can uh, I can uh, I can answer what the cause and effect issues are on time scales that are 32 years. Okay, so uh, and that's uh, about a serious uh, piece of work. Um, I could, I could say you can see the decay in the ice, which of course you can also see without any fancy, fancy method. Oh, uh, I can't tell you why. Okay, I'd like to uh, end this evening by uh, once again thanking Bud Reese and the staff of this marvelous aquarium, uh, John Carlson for his generous support, and our speaker John Wetlock. Thank you.